This morning, I'll be focusing on the text from Mark, chapter 13. The lectionary reading is from verses 24 to 37. But to get a sense of what is in 24 to 37, we need to read from chapter 13, verse 1 onwards. I'm not going to read it, but I will narrate it to you. One of the disciples asked Jesus, or pointed out to Jesus, look at these large stones as they were coming out of the temple and what huge buildings. And Jesus said, not one stone will be on another stone. These buildings will be destroyed. When they crossed the valley and went to the Mount of Olives, from the Temple Mount, the three disciples, James, John and Peter, privately asked him, when will these things happen? And he said that in your generation this temple will be destroyed. And in 70 AD the Romans destroyed the temple. There was also a lot of persecution of Christians which Jesus foretold and he told the disciples, do not fear when they take you before councils and governors and kings, the Holy Spirit will give you a word to speak. Fear can cause us to be tongue-tied. But Jesus assured them that the Spirit of God would be with them. Now, the scenario changes and Jesus talks about the coming of the Son of Man. And sometimes we misunderstand because we don't see the gap between the destruction of the temple, the ensuing persecution, the desolating sacrilege that took place under the Romans and the final coming of the Lord. Our beloved late Dr. Brian Winkler used to tell us about how as a young man when he would be returning from his from an engineering college in Coimbatore to spend his holidays in Wellington, from a distance the mountains looked one. You can't see the valleys. It's only when you come into the mountains that you see that there are mountains and there are valleys and there are all and other mountains. The Old Testament prophets saw the coming of the Lord as one. They could not see his first coming and his second coming. And similarly, in this passage, when Jesus describes what is about to happen in the generation of the apostles and those who were present with him, they are not able to see what was about to happen around 70 AD, he didn't tell the date, and about his coming, they conflated, they confused it. 
so jesus predicts that but in those days after the suffering the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light this is a quotation from isaiah this is apocalyptic language we have apocalyptic language in certain chapters of ezekiel in certain chapters of daniel in certain chapters of zechariah we have apocalyptic languages when jesus speaks about his coming again in the gospels we have apocalyptic language in revelation in thessalonians when he speaks about the second coming this is a special genre and it has to be interpreted with care because it appeals to our imagination these are fantastic images what does it communicate that there will be chaos there will be this order the sun will be darkened the moon will not reflect the light of the sun it will be uh, the uh, the, uh, uh, the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken and then you will see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven this is a quotation from daniel chapter 7 verse 14 one like the son of man i saw one like the son of man coming down from heaven in daniel and jesus identifies himself with that passage in daniel so jesus says i will come again in very chaotic times when there will be great disturbance when things will be free wheeling and people will be disoriented and he tells them learn a lesson from the fig tree when you see a branch become tender and it's put forth its leaves you know that summer is near and when you see these things taking place you know that he is near he is not talking about the destruction of the temple he is not talking about the persecution he is talking about isaiah and and the image from daniel truly i tell you the generation will not pass away until all of these things have taken place heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not pass away but about that day now what is that day the day of the lord but about that day the day of the lord the day when he will come again no one knows the day or hour neither the angels in heaven nor the son but only the father so there is no point in speculating and then he tells gives us a parable that it is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home he puts his servants in charge each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch it is like the man who gave people with different talents jobs he gave different talents similar expecting them to work and put their put their money to work therefore keep awake for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or at dawn or else he may find you asleep when you when he comes suddenly and what i say to you 
I say to all, <coughs> keep awake. So he says, be busy about your work. Don't speculate. When Jesus was ascending <coughs> up in the book of Acts chapter 1, all the disciples and apostles, they were looking up and two men dressed in white, angelic beings, came and stood in their midst and said, Ye men of Galilee, why do you look up? He who has gone up will come in like manner. In other words, what did he tell you? Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Beginning with Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the world. Be busy about the work of the kingdom. Go about making disciples, establishing small congregations in all ethnic groups around the world. And they were supposed to scatter like the people of, around the Tower of Babel were supposed to scatter. God did not intend for them to stay there but to inhabit the earth and take care of the earth. Similarly, we are not to keep the message to ourselves but we are supposed to share the good news with every ethnic group around the world. We are supposed to be busy and always expecting the Lord of love to return so that God's rule will be established, God's rule of love will be established in the world. God's rule of love is a rule of justice, is a rule of peace, shalom, peace with justice. Our world needs it. We are in great need of it as we hear about wars, we hear about issues and problems with our own, in our own country, in Manipur, as we hear about conflicts in, in our own nation, in our neighboring nations, as we hear about issues in Myanmar, as we hear about Ukraine and Russia, between Israelis and Palestinians. There are grave issues that need to be resolved and they are solvable, but it appears that the leaders of the world would rather have conflict and sell arms and make money than solve these problems and stop carnage and <coughs> stop children and women and vulnerable people from being victims. This is Advent. We welcome our Lord Jesus Christ. He came once, He is going to come again. So as we celebrate Advent, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, we look forward to also His second coming. Like a lover waits for her beloved. May the Lord bless us. <coughs>